Hello everyone. Welcome to the Clarity, Supportability, and Future Training. My name is Bill Yi, and today we're going to cover the new enhancements uh, for widgets and grids for, in Clarity 16.1.0. So one of the enhancements we've done for configurable widgets is allowing the ability to edit or remove the widget within the widget panel. So this helps streamline the, the management and usability uh, for widgets on your grids. The other new enhancement we've done is that prior to this release, when you put the uh, grid into group by mode, the aggregation is only a sum, we uh, sum up, and only uh, it applied to numeric attributes. So we expanded that capability to uh, beyond sum is to add average, min, and max, and count, and you can configure that on the column header when in, when in group by mode. In addition, we've expanded the data types that you can aggregate. Uh, some of these include boolean uh, dates, so you can uh, add that and configure that within the column header as well. And if you didn't want aggregation for a specific column uh, to help speed it up, you can also disable that aggregation as well for a particular attribute. And last but not least, uh, for configurable widgets, we are expanding that to other areas within the Clarity application. Uh, those include the investment to modules and also to cost, benefit, and budget plan details. So one of the goals that we had for the enhancements of our <coughs> grids and widgets is to allow the end user to get information, visuals, uh, complex information that would otherwise would have a technical resource to build a report or a complex portlet. Uh, end users can now help themselves to try to get that data. And as we're uh, working with widgets, we're continually adding uh, that support throughout the rest of Clarity so uh, end users can better understand their Clarity data. So the new enhancement regarding the edit and remove in the configuration panel, uh, what it allows you to do is that you will be able to select a particular widget and just do a right mouse click and you can edit and remove that widget. Uh, before you had to go inside the Manage Widget button and search for the widget, you do it directly within the widget panel, which kind of eases with the usability. But also, too, there's a use case where, uh, save you're, you're, you're taking a, a shared view from s that someone else created, and say, but you only used three of the five of those widgets in that save view. You may want to remove those other two. You weren't able to do that because it was a shared view to you. Uh, you may want to just remove it and then also to do a save as and just have it your own personal uh, save view, private. Uh, now you're able to do that. So you're able to take a, a shared view that was shared with by, by someone else and just do a right mouse click and remove those uh, widgets and then save it as a new save view as a private or you can share it with someone else. Um, the, the edit icon, it, well, the context menu here will only show if you're the creator of that widget or uh, if that widget uh, is in the widget library and you have the widget manage, uh, manage widget library right. Uh, that's when you see the edit uh, context menu for when you do the right mouse click. And for all the widgets, you know, you should be able to see the remove when you do the right mouse click. So for the per column aggregation by data type in the grid, it only applies when the grid is in group by mode. And it, this screenshot project type is uh, uh, the value for the group by. Um, for sum, I think uh, it will also, you know, by default it will sum, and that will still remain when you do that within the grid. Uh, but within the column, what we've done is that we had the ability to add this new option called value aggregation. And for that one, you can pick uh, different options of why you want to aggregate. Say, for example, the ETC here, you can choose maximum. So choose the maximum for each of these group by sections. Uh, the other one here is, say, for average. You could do an average uh, for the plan ROI, and you could does the roll up for those particular ones as well. And by default, if it's if it's sum, we don't show a suffix. But with the other uh, aggregation uh, methods here, it actually shows a suffix for max average for those particular areas as well. And also, too, we have an option as none. You can turn off that aggregation uh, for that particular 
uh, column. And here are all the, the different data types and also to the aggregation methods that are supported for each of the different data types. So when you're setting the per column aggregation for TSVs, it happens at on for the total um, column field. And for right now, it only supports, you know, uh, for some here or none. You can turn it, you know, have some, so those, uh, uh, and having that, and that, that applies today. But if you want to control it and turn it off, uh, you do it from the totals, and then it applies to all of the different per corresponding different periods. You're not able to do that per period at a per period area. It is all controlled within the totals. We felt that you didn't necessarily want to go you know, for each individual period to turn it off or on. Um, so we felt that uh, at the total column, it does the turning on or turning off for the uh, value aggregation for the column aggregation. So we're continuing to expand our configurable widgets throughout the rest of Clarity. And one of the areas where added support for widgets is under the to-do uh, mo to do's module for a particular investment. And this is the area where you can track for a particular investment all your tasks, risk issues and changes, checklists, and investment to-dos. And having the widgets there will be a, definitely a big plus. And also we added support for uh, widgets under the cost, budget, and benefit plan details area under finances module. So in terms of helping managing and looking at your financial data and adding the ability of, of doing widgets, that will definitely help our end users in terms of tracking and analyzing their financial data. Let me give you a demo of the widgets and grid enhancements so you can see them in action. So the first item I'm going to cover is the ability to edit and delete widgets within the widget panel. And to do that is select a widget and right mouse click and you get two options to edit or remove. So let's choose edit. So it takes you directly into the uh, edit widget dialog so you can make your changes and then you click cancel or save and it takes you directly back to the widget panel you can also choose uh, remove and it removes uh, the widget directly from the widget panel so it makes the, uh, the ability of manage and the usability of widgets much easier so the next item I want to cover is the ability the per column aggregation within the grid so in order to do that you need to be in group by mode. So let's go ahead and go into group by mode and let's scroll over. And you'll notice we have one already set up <clears throat> is that we have plan cost by count. So uh, what it does, it actually, instead of by default, everything is still sum. But if there's something, choose, choose that, it actually does the, uh, you can choose different ones. So say, for example, this one is count. So if you do it and to, to set it, Go into value aggregation and you can choose all these particular options. So it varies depending on the, the data type of the field you're, you're selecting. You can have here this count. You can go into another let's try ETCs and choose max. And it displays a suffix for the max. And then also too here this one is uh, we choose, actually choose average. And you can go choose an average for this particular uh, group by section and breaks it down. So uh, you have that a capability to do that as well. Also, too, you can uh, by default, like I mentioned, it shows it by sum, and when you have sum, it doesn't show a suffix. But if you choose something else than than uh, than sum, then it shows a suffix. Also, too, you can also turn off the aggregation. And then, in case you does, if it doesn't apply, you can choose that capability as well. If you don't think um, in you that per column too. And let's show you the per aggregation for the um, TS fees because there's some special handling there. So with TS fees, the key uh, point here is that it's controlled by the TSV totals. So by default, when you go into let's go into group by mode here group by project type again and the totals control uh, the the roll up and you know the display of the uh, per column aggregation so right now by default uh, we only uh, support some and it 
and when you go in group by mode, it'll show the sum of the totals and all the corresponding periods. But also, too, if you go to the totals, you have the ability to select sum or none. And if you choose none, it turns it off not only at the totals, but all of its corresponding periods. And, uh, and you can only do that at the total, you know, TSP totals. You're not able to do it at a specific TSP period. And we felt that you wouldn't want to go to each individual period and turn it on and off. So everything is controlled by the TSP totals here. And um, last but not least, let's go ahead and show you the where we've done the the additional uh, widget support. So let's go to ARD Payments Project. We've added widget support for to-dos, uh, investment to-dos area. We added widgets here where you can go ahead and help in terms of the management of your task to-dos, investment to-dos, checklists, risk issues and changes. We've also added widget support under financials, under uh, each of the different details areas. So if you go to cost plan, you go to the cost plan details. We've added the widget support here for the cost plan details. And under budgets, let's go into budget details. We've added widget support for the budget details. And last but not least, if you go into benefit plans and go into the benefit plan details, We've added widget support here as well. And that concludes our demo. So this concludes the presentation for widgets and grids. Thank you.